Hello users, it's me once again. Uh, today I just want to um, review my wedding watch. Um, I've been given this from obviously from my wife's family. At the time, I I've been asked to choose uh, whatever I want, um, and I think the the feel I get was up to the price of a brand new. Um, Rolex watch. Now, I tried the Rolex watch and I tried the other Breitling and all the brands as well. But it's just when it comes to Rolex, it at that that time I felt that everyone had Rolex. I just want something unique, more outstanding design. Um, I I just don't like to follow the crowd, should we say? I mean, if you, when you looked at my previous videos, well, I just don't like to follow everyone the way how everyone does and. And that's why I was immediately drawn into this brand Tag Heuer. I just like the fact that the way how the logo is and the name Carrera seems to be quite a very uh, luxury sort of thing. Um, like Porsche, they have a lot of Carrera series. So, um, so that's how my quest started. So I just wanted to start by unboxing this. I'm sure you have. Uh, seen this many times, but um, I hope this video is more of a personal approach. I had this product for about four years Okay So you find it a bit much more dustier than others, but hope you it will give you a different input Different insight of this product. So I had this for four years and every single time um, when I come back home I tend to place it like this and then I open it up, place my watch like that. So I was, you know, it just gave gave me great joy after work, hard work day, you know, hard working day. Um, waking up and seeing this first thing in the morning really cheered me up. You know, a bright new day, gear up, let's get on with work kind of thing. You know, so you can see that there's a lot of dust uh, here. Anyway, so enough said. Let's get on with the. Um, the appearance and so on. So this is the um, Tag Heuer Caliber 1887. Now this is known to be a automatic chronograph, and it's the it goes up to down to 100 meters of deep in water, and a it's a 41 mil. I think for the size of my wrist, is 41 mil seems to be the perfect size, and um, it is a polished steel um, strap. I I am not a fan of a, a leather at all. It's just the the fact that leather seems to when when you have it for several years, it has this distinctive distinctive disgusting smell that I have to say that I never liked about. Um, and and you know when it comes to steel, you could always clean it. And um, I like it clean and shiny, should we say? So the it's it's about twenty nine point three millimeters and um, it's about seventeen point f I think seventeen or sixteen millimeter thick. So it's quite thick as you can see, and um, the balance frequency is about twenty eight thousand eight hundred vibration per hour. Okay, so when you put your ear against the watch, you could hear about eight six to eight beats. You do the math, but it's like kind of sound. You could hear the movements happening, and um, it's a sapphire glass as well. Um, you can see over the years the metal itself, because I've been careless. I've known to be quite careless uh, with my watch. You can see all these horrible um, scratches, but yet the the glass, sapphire glass is almost, I would say, 99.99% just clear. Um, you probably can see some fingerprints on it, but it, it is just amazing how clean it is over the years. Um, as I said, for four years, that is. And one of the things that my mind was blown away was the back of it. I'm really a great fan of a, of a skeleton concept watch should we say that's how I like to put it and the text itself it says Swiss made 
okay automatic swiss made tag hoya um, i believe there are 39 rubies on it god knows what that means i think it's like pieces put all put together and and, and so on so uh those are the rough, rough things i don't want to go to like too much use too much jargon on it but i want to emphasize on the the way how it's aged yet it's still beautiful and um how well uh, how, how much i have a personal attachment to it now um i don't wear this i tend to in the beginning of my wedding um uh, wedding years that um marriage years sorry <laughs> i tend to wear it almost every day but af after i got my um, apple watch i tend to wear this only in an important uh, occasion for example like um like when i have a very important meeting with my clients or um, like events and so on so i save up for it now once your this is fully charged it is known to last for 50 hours it's quite impressive because what, what that means is you could use it for a day skip for another day and still will be going on for continuing on the time and it's really good and um what else can i say about this actually it's it's um 39 jewel and, and and so on so yeah i mean enough about all these jargons but just look at it it's just beautiful um and these thing as you rotate it recharges and this seems to be like a heart should we say i like to call it a heart but i could sense a lot of watch experts cringing about that thing but you can see this is constantly moving so I guess this is actually functioning as a battery for the whole watch. And um, the blue thing here I want to show you is, is when you press the um, chronograph function, you can see that it's, as you click, it moves. And um, the way how the, the needle, <laughs> let's call it a needle because that's what I like to call it. Um, if you press it, it's fairly accurate very very well moving and then what what you do is you press it and if you want to put it back you just press the reset button here so it's immediately just goes back to zero okay um so those are the rest of the bits um you know what it is for it says 30 20 10 i think it's like every minute it this goes up and this is the seconds where it says Cal um, 1887. And, and this is the minutes, I presume. That's how it works. I just don't really use it. I mean, how many people actually use stopwatch nowadays, especially for the luxury watch? Um, the way how you change your time, obviously this is quite pretty standard, which is first click, uh, you rotate it, and then you change the time. And sorry, the dates, you can see that is changing and then if you pull it out the second click further click is where you move and you change your time so that's how it works now um as i said it's just when the moment when it was on my wrist as you can see that's when i fell in love with it and because i love the design so much I decide to also match my wedding ring with it. So it goes along. Uh, this wedding ring, by the way, is 0.35 ki uh, carat diamond ring. And it's one of those things. My left hand really stands out in a crowd. And I can see that a lot of people actually um, in the crowd actually stares at it, which is oh, quite a nice feeling, actually. Sometimes I'm afraid that someone might actually chop off my hand. <laughs> No, not really. Anyway, well, well, basically, what? But the one of the dark side I heard about this watch is the fact that it was initially known um, for, um, like, I think it was something to do with McLaren F1 partnership celebration and so on. That's what I actually read a long time ago. So I wouldn't want to go too much deeply about history about this. But there was a, a story about. This is when after I bought it that the the mechanical uh, movements and the design of it 
uh, Tag Heuer initially said that it was a 100% in-house design, but some people actually accused that it's a direct copy of Seiko Model 6S37. And, um, and I think Tag Heuer, the chairman, later on admit that yes, they were inspired by Seiko in some way and blah, blah, blah. But to, to be honest with you, I wasn't really turned off by it at all. I mean, look at it, it's just a beautiful watch. Um, it goes so well with a uh, suit or maybe in a casual dress, um, whatever it is. But, you know, I mean, even this this lock itself, I was initially skeptical about this whole thing, but four years is still um, pretty neat. It it's, fits very well and, and a very nice design. So it's one of my most, one of the most precious um, treasure that I have at the moment. And I just, it's nearing to my fourth year wedding anniversary. Um, and I just want to celebrate uh, our wedding, me and my wife, and uh, record this video uh, just to put more personal touch onto it and uh, just show you how well um, I would like to say it's well aged. I don't know how you think about it. I'm sure many of the watch experts are gonna say no. You've been terrible um, looking after this watch. You can see all these scratch. But yet again, what I want to emphasize mostly is the fact that despite all these scratches gathered over the years, the sapphire glass just remains so clean. Some people actually thought there was no lens at all. And that's exactly um, how it is at the moment. Um, I, I I was notorious to actually break these watch lenses in the past, but it didn't happen to me so far. I I'm sure this ha I have bumped into a few surfaces, unfortunately, while I was moving. But yet, it's just clear, beautiful, and it's um, very. Flashy, bling bling, that goes well with my wedding ring. And um, that's about it, I guess. So um, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope um, you also liked this video as well. And um, yeah, um, by the way, I don't think this is actually available anymore on Tagoya uh, shop. I haven't seen it since like for the past um, year or so now, but Nonetheless, um, this is my watch. So thank you very much for watching this video. This is Love Jesus, please. Bye.